Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, it's always pleasant to welcome back a friend who's been away. That's why our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, was happy to be on her way to school a bit earlier than usual last Friday morning. Yes, last Friday, Mr. Boynton was due back from a biologist convention, which had lasted for three weeks. I had heard from him during his absence, of course. In fact, he sent me one passionate postcard after another. Two altogether. <laughs> But shy or not, a man is a man. Or as the French would say, c'est la vie, c'est l'amour, which means a man is a man. <laughs> That's why I had Walter Denton pick me up so early last Friday. I hope we get to school before Mr. Boynton does, Walter. Oh, we will, Miss Brooks. This little old buggy will have you down to school in nothing flat. I'll settle for with nothing flat. <laughs> It'll feel rather strange seeing Mr. Boynton again. I wonder how he'll seem to me after being away so long. Oh, he probably hasn't changed any. Just a big, tall, dark-haired, good-looking guy with a sparkling smile and a throbbing voice. Yeah, who needs him? <laughs> he sure is attractive to girls. If it wasn't for the fact that she's so daffy in love with me, even Harriet Conklin would go for him. Harriet? But she's only a young girl. Is there an age limit? <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. <laughs> And I took Harriet to the movies last night. We saw Humphrey Bogart and Tokyo Joe. And after the picture, we both got the same thought at the same time. How much Mr. Boynton reminded us of Bogey. Mr. Boynton reminded you of Bogey? Well, sure, Miss Brooks. You see, in the picture, Bogey goes back to Japan after the war and finds out that the wife whom he thought was dead isn't. And boy, what he goes through to get that wife back. And that's what made us think of Mr. Boynton. What? He goes through almost as much not to get a wife. <laughs> Present company included. But I must admit I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Me too. In fact, I'm bringing him a little gift this morning. It was Harriet Conklin's idea. We were having lunch yesterday in the school cafeteria, and she suggested that we all show him how glad we are he's home in a concrete way. What are you getting him, a building? <laughs> no, ma'am. No, we're all getting something different. Miss Enright happened to be at the table when Harriet mentioned it, and she got all excited about the idea. She would. Oh, I forgot. You're not overly fond of Miss Enright, are you? I've got nothing against her, Walter. She's a very good English teacher. She speaks very highly of you, Miss Brooks. In fact, just yesterday, she paid you a very nice compliment. Miss Enright did? Sure. She said you put even more effort into teaching than the job needed. And then she said she thought it was a miracle, considering how monotonous your existence is, that you don't look even grimmer than you do. <laughs> and to think, she never used to like me. <laughs> of course, she does consider you quite a rival for Mr. Boynton's affections. That's why she'll probably get him some real expensive gift. Her parents are quite wealthy, you know. Yes, I know they are, but mine aren't. So as much as I'd like to get Mr. Boynton a little welcome home present, I'm afraid it's out of the question. Although I suppose I could cut off all my hair and sell it for enough money to buy him a nice watch chain. <laughs> no, he's probably pawned his watch to get me a new comb. <laughs> Say, that'd make a swell short story, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Thanks, I'll submit it to O. Henry in the morning. <laughs> Here's what I'm giving Mr. Boynton. It's right in this paper bag. Wanna take a look at it? All right, Walter. Oh, it's a tie. Wow, pretty loud, isn't it? It's a very original design, Miss Brooks. Tell me, what does it look like to you? Let's see. Well, to me, it looks like a big yellow tree on a cliff by the ocean with a purple owl on top of it playing a bugle. <laughs> That's exactly right, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Stretch Snodgrass gave it to me last Christmas. You see, I'm broke, too, and since I never had the gut... The courage to wear it. <laughs> See, I figured I might as well give it to Mr. Boynton. Gosh, I hope he has the good, the courage to wear it. <laughs> well, it is a fairly grotesque little number, Walter, but after all, it isn't the gift itself which matters. 
It's the spirit with which you foisted on someone. <laughs> Here's the biology lab, Miss Brooks. Shall we go in and welcome back our hero together? If our hero has arrived, it might be a nice idea, but first I... Look, look who just came out of the lab, Miss Enright. Good morning, Walter. Hi, Miss Enright. And dear Miss Brooks, I hate to be the bearer of such evil tidings, but your quarry hasn't been sighted yet. My quarry? You were here when I arrived, remember? Well, I just wanted to leave a little welcome home gift for Mr. Boynton. I assure you I haven't spent two seconds hanging around this door. Oh, I'm sure you haven't, Miss Enright, but tell me one thing. Did you sleep with your paws over the threshold or under the threshold? <laughs> Excuse me, ladies, but I'm going to leave my little gift on Mr. Boynton's desk, too. Well, Miss Brooks, I suppose you're waiting to deliver your humble little offering to Mr. Boynton in person. No, Miss Enright, to be perfectly honest with you... Please, Miss Brooks, it's a little early in the morning for fantasy. <laughs> but even if you were going to tell me that you haven't bought anything for Mr. Boynton, I assure you that your method of spreading the welcome mat is very effective. What do you mean? Well, you're wearing it, aren't you? Well, no. Really, I don't mean to criticize your get-up, my dear. I realize that on a teacher's salary, dressing well takes more than good taste, even if you had any. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't have to depend on my earnings to get along. Mama and Papa have always been extremely well off. They didn't know how well off till you were born. <laughs> I'd better be on my way. I can't afford to engage in a common hair-pulling contest. Not when you get your hair at I.J. Fox, you can't. <laughs> now, see here, Miss Enright, let's... Well, I left my present on one of the lab tables so he doesn't miss it. Gee, that's a pretty big box you left on his desk, Miss Enright. What's in it? It's an imported suede jacket, Walter. And if you'll excuse me now, Miss Brooks, I'll let my gift make my welcome speech for me. I'm going to freshen up a bit. If I were you, darling, I'd do the same thing. If I were you, so would I. <laughs> well, this is great. All I've got for Mr. Boynton's homecoming is a big, fat, empty handshake. Don't you believe it, Miss Brooks. I wouldn't let you be caught in a predicament like that. That's why I made out a card saying, to Philip Boynton from Constance Brooks, and put it in the bag with that tie I got from Stretch Snodgrass. That tie? Well, it was very considerate of you, Walter, but alongside of Miss Enright's jacket, that tie is bound to suffer. In fact, it looks like it's suffering by itself. <laughs> well, I did think of that, Miss Brooks. I'm sorry, Walter, I just can't accept your favor. Yeah, but Miss Brooks... I'm sorry, I've got to hurry into the lab and get that tie before Mr. Boynton lays eyes on it. I'd be embarrassed to death if he thought that oh, hello, I... hello, Miss Brooks. You're looking for me? Why, Mr. Boynton, I didn't know you were back. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Hi, Walter. Uh, let's go into the lab, huh? Okay, Mr. Boynton. Uh, the lab? Not yet. Uh, don't you think you ought to say hello to our principal, Mr. Conklin? Oh, I just left his office. I brought him a little souvenir from the biologist convention. Oh, it was quite a meeting, Miss Brooks. Come on in the lab for a minute. I want to talk to you. Well, let's go in, Miss Brooks. Everything will be all right. Oh, but that tie with the owl... Oh, it's good to get back, all right. Same old blackboard, same lab tables, equipment, and... Say, well, what's this little bag? Open it, why don't you? Maybe it's a present from someone. A <laughs> uh, uh, present? Oh, it's a tie. Ah! <laughs> what happened? Did the tree fall off the cliff? <laughs> Wait a minute. This is identical to the tie I gave Stretch Snodgrass last Christmas. You gave it to Stretch? It certainly gets around. <laughs> I, I remember it very well. I thought it was all right to give to a young kid, but... Uh, oh, here's a card that came with it. Don't read it. Oh, that's okay, Miss Brooks. Let him read it. Hmm, it says, to Philip Boynton from Daisy Enright. Daisy Enright? But look at that big box on your desk, Mr. Boynton. Why don't you go over and open that? But, uh, another package? What is this? Anyway, let's take a look at this situation. That's what I tried to tell you in the hall, Miss Brooks. I figured the tie would look like nothing next to Miss Enright's gift, so I switched the cards. What? Well, this is a surprise. Oh, what a beautiful suede jacket. 
Miss Brooks, you shouldn't have done it. I didn't. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, I, uh, Walter here. I've got to go I... now. Still a little homework. Walter. I can knock off Walter. So long. Glad you're back. Walter. Well, Miss Brooks, the, well, this convinces me of something I've always felt to be true, that your sensibilities, your, your generous nature... Oh, look, Mr. Boynton, I just... Well, now, just comparing this exquisite jacket with that ridiculous tie of Miss Enright's, it's just, just overwhelming. You like the jacket, huh? <laughs> no, it's, it's the most wonderful gift I've ever received. Now, I did plan to stay home tonight and catch up on some work, but this, this lovely gift changes all that. Miss Brooks, I... If I may, well... I'd like a date tonight. You would? How about dinner, Mr. Boynton? Well, it's a splendid idea, Miss Brooks. What are you having at your house? <laughs> you, now. <laughs> oh, good. And, and let's have lunch together, too. Fine. The lunch will be on me. I wouldn't have it any other way. Me either. <laughs> well, there's the bell for class, Miss Brooks. Yes, I'd better get going, but... Mr. Boynton, I'd appreciate it if you'd help me to the door. Help you? Yes. I want to be sure I don't trip over my conscience. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst after meals or snacks. When you brush your teeth with Colgate's right after eating, you help remove acids before they can harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. And remember, Colgate's cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Always use Colgate Dental Cream right after eating to help prevent new cavities, help stop tooth decay before it starts. Well, when lunchtime arrived, I hurried toward the cafeteria to keep my date with Mr. Boynton. But as I passed the principal's office, Mr. Conklin's daughter, Harriet, bounded toward me from behind a potted plant. Hi, Miss Brooks. Daddy wants to see you before you go to lunch. Naturally. But before you go in, I've got some wonderful news for you. What do you think I just found? Miss Enright lying at the foot of a stairway. <laughs> no. I've discovered the most devastating welcome home gift for Mr. Boynton. I got it in a store around the corner. Here, I'll open it for you. It's a hand-painted silk handkerchief, Miss Brooks. Look at it. Well, what does the pattern look like to you? To me, it looks like a big yellow tree on a cliff by the ocean with a purple owl on top of it playing a bugle. <laughs> That's exactly right. Isn't it the end? I hope so. <laughs> it was part of a set, but I couldn't afford the extra 65 cents for the tie that went with it. Don't let that worry you, Harriet. Maybe Mr. Boynton will just happen to have a tie with a yellow tree and an owl on it. And did you notice this, Miss Brooks? Right under the yellow tree on one of the green branches is the initial B. Get it? B for Boynton. Or Billiards. <laughs> it's really very pretty, Harriet, and I'm sure Mr. Boynton will love every twig of it, but I'd better get in to see your father. Okay, Miss Brooks. See you in the cafeteria when you're finished with Daddy, or vice versa. Come in. Well, it's Miss Brooks. Sit down, won't you? Over here by my desk. That's where all my friends sit when they drop in to see me. You all right, Mr. Conklin? <laughs> well, now that you mention it, Miss Brooks, I'm not all right at all. I'm very embarrassed. You see, this morning, Mr. Boynton presented me with a four-pound frog. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to call it? It's this brass ornament you see before you, and that's the crux of my embarrassment. 
You see, I had refused to join in my daughter's plan to purchase a gift for Boynton, but when he gave me this uh, brass object, I told him I had a gift for him at my home. Well, it's not too late to pick it up, Mr. Conklin. But I have nothing for him at my home. Well, how do you think I can help you, Mr. Conklin? Uh, I find this most difficult to put into words, but although I don't believe in borrowing, I simply must purchase a gift for Boynton. And, Miss Brooks, as I've heard the student body put it, I'm stony. Mr. Conklin. Yeah? You're still stony. <laughs> oh, and there's no sense in wasting each other's time, is the good day, Miss Brooks. Good day, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Miss Brooks, what's new in Inner Sanctum? Not very much, Walter. What have you got in those two paper bags? Well, in this one, I got the tie that Mr. Boynton thinks Miss Enright gave him. Owls on parade? Yeah. Mr. Boynton said he'd have no use for it, so he gave it to me. Of course, he warned me never to wear it when Miss Enright's around. If you're smart, you won't wear it when you're around. <laughs> but gosh, Miss Brooks, now I'm stuck without a gift for Mr. Boynton. Can you think of anything I could give him? Sure, but I don't think I'd fit in that bag. <laughs> <laughs> and while we're on the subject, have you seen Miss Enright around anywhere? Oh, no, Miss Brooks. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that she doesn't get to talk to Mr. Boynton. Me too. I'd better get him out of the cafeteria and over to Marty's malt shop for lunch. Are you going to eat now, Walter? Not just yet. I've got to deliver this sandwich to Mr. Conklin. Uh, that's what's in this other bag. Oh. He's eating in his office today. He says there's something in the cafeteria that makes him very nervous. I know. You pass a cashier on the way out. <laughs> huh? Forget it. I'd better hurry now, Walter. See you later. Okay, Miss Brooks. Come in. Oh, it's you, Denton. Yes, sir. Here's your lunch. It came to 55 cents. Did it really? Yes, sir. I laid it out for you. That was very considerate, Denton, but I'm afraid you'll have to wait to be reimbursed. I, uh, I don't want to break a big bill. How big? Get out, boy. <laughs> uh, no, 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 wait, wait. What have you got in that other bag? It's just a necktie, Mr. Conklin. A necktie? Yeah, would you like to see it? I'll open the bag for you. Uh, just and hand I... it over. I'll open it myself. Thank you. Mr. Conklin? Uh, yes, it's delightful. But frankly, Denton, I don't think it quite suits your personality. However, I might be persuaded to take it off your hands. Yes, indeed, I think I can put this tie to very good use. Well, sure, Mr. Conklin, I'll sell it to you real cheap. Uh, I'm not interested in buying it, Denton, but perhaps we could work out a trade. A trade? Here on my desk is a beautiful brass frog. It's brand new, you see. I just took it out of this lovely maroon gift box. If you'll give me the tie, you may have this charming ornament. It's a deal, Mr. Conklin. Yes, indeed. I think I can put this frog to very good use. <laughs> I'm glad I caught you before you went home, Mr. Boynton. This is the first chance I've had to give you this little homecoming present. Another present? My goodness. I certainly appreciate this, Harriet. Not only because of the spirit behind it, but because it serves as a reminder that I ought to pick up a little gift for Miss Brooks. You see, I'm having dinner with her tonight. Oh, I think that's stupendous, Mr. Boynton. What are you going to get her? Nothing very ornate, I'm afraid. I spent quite a bit of money on my trip, you know. Oh, by the way, what's in this package you've given me? It's a hanky with your initial on it. A big B. Hmm, B for Brooks. I mean, Boynton. I had it gift wrapped for you, Mr. Boynton, but if you'd like to open it Oh, now... no, no, leave it wrapped, and, and thanks again, Harriet. Yes, indeed, I think I can put this hanky to very good use. Do you think Mr. Boynton enjoyed the dinner, Connie? Oh, I'm sure he did, Mrs. Davis. Maybe you ought to go back into the living room, Mr. Boynton. I'll finish these dishes myself. I wouldn't dream of it, Mrs. Davis. I'll get my chance to be alone with Mr. Boynton later when you go to the movies. Oh. Am I going to the movies? <laughs> I saved up for it all day. <laughs> Very well, dear. But before I go, I'll make some coffee for the others. Others? I forgot to tell you, Connie. <laughs> Me and that absent mind of mine. <laughs> 
Mr. Conklin called late this afternoon and said he missed Mr. Boynton at school, so he'd drop over tonight with a little gift he had for him. Oh. That was right after Walter Denton called, and he said he'd be over with his little present. This is the earliest Christmas we've ever had. <laughs> now go on inside, Connie. Forget the dishes. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. See you in a few minutes. Well, Miss Brooks, you all finished with the dishes? Mrs. Davis gave me time off for good behavior. <laughs> I, I don't want you to think I neglected to bring you a little memento of my recent trip. It's just that I, I was waiting for the propitious moment to present it to you, and, well, I think this is it. Here, Miss Brooks, I hope you like it. Why, Mr. Boynton, what a beautifully wrapped package. Oh, it's a shame to open it, but I'm so curious to find out what it is. So am I. Uh, that is, uh, <laughs> I'm curious to see how you like it. I love it. <laughs> uh, may I may I see it, please? Surely. Here. Oh, thanks. I'll just. Ah! <laughs> you don't like it. Oh, I love it. You you have no idea how difficult it was for me to get a handkerchief like this with a design to match the tie Miss Enright gave me this morning. Yeah. I don't know. I know I didn't seem too crazy about it at first, but it, it kind of grew on me. Look, it's initialed B for Brooks. Or bought by Harriet. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, if that tie grew on you so swiftly today, why did you palm it off on Walter Denton? Walter who? <laughs> well, uh, hadn't you better answer the front door, Miss Brooks? It's not locked. Come in. Oh, good evening, Miss Brooks, Mr. Boynton. Good evening, Mr. Conklin. I'm certainly glad to see you. He sure is. My, uh, my daughter Harriet told me you were having dinner here, Boynton, so I thought I'd drop over and present you with this little welcome home gift I promised this afternoon. Here. Oh, thank you, Mr. Conklin. Uh, shall I unwrap it now? If you wish. One thing about Osgood Conklin, he never stints on gifts. I bought this original creation in the most exclusive haberdashery in town. <laughs> you don't like it. We love it. Always have. <laughs> what could be lovelier than a yellow tree with a purple owl playing a bugle? <laughs> Unless it was a purple tree with an orange pig playing a fife. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, Mr. Conklin. It's just what I needed. Oh, don't mention it, my boy. I still owe you a debt of gratitude for that lovely brass frog you gave me. I shall treasure it always. Come in. Oh. Evening, folks. Harriet Conklin told me you'd be here, so... Mr. Conklin, what are you doing here? He just came over to give Mr. Boynton this gorgeous tie. See, Walter, with the tree and the owl? Gee, that's very... Oh, no! What are you all knowing about, Denton? Uh, Walter, did you say you had a gift for me? Oh, yes, Mr. Boynton. I got it right here in this maroon box. Oh, no! <laughs> What are you all knowing about, Mr. Conklin? Uh, Denton, I'd better have a word with you in the kitchen, boy. Oh, sure, Mr. Conklin. Just as soon as I give Mr. Boynton this brass frog. Brass frog? Brass frog. Brass frog. <laughs> well, thank you, Walter. It uh, certainly is fun exchanging gifts, isn't it? <laughs> yes, and tonight we're really exchanging them. <laughs> Well, it's the idea that counts anyway, isn't it? And I've gotten some swell things, things that make me almost glad I left Madison so I could come back. Look, Mr. Conklin, how do you like this suede jacket I've got on? Oh, it's extremely attractive, Boynton. Miss Brooks gave me this. Come in. Well, good evening, everyone. Hello, Miss Enright. Miss Enright? Miss Enright. Miss Enright. <laughs> told me I'd find you here, Mr. Boynton. Uh, she, she did? You remember Harriet, known to her intimate as the town crier? <laughs> oh, let me look at you, Mr. Boynton. My, that suede jacket looks simply divine. Ain't it a dandy? <laughs> uh, Miss Enright, why don't you and I go for a walk? It's pretty stuffy in here. Oh, but I just got here, darling. Let me admire my jacket for just a moment. Y your jacket? Mr. Boynton... I better have a ticket with you, talk with you in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Say, what's going 
going on here? This morning I left a gift for you, Mr. Boynton, on your desk. My card was attached. Well, yes, I, I got the tie, Miss Enright. But... Tie? I didn't give you a tie. I gave you that suede jacket you're wearing. You? Well, the card said... <laughs> Miss Brooks, how did you... Miss Brooks, where are you? I'm over here in the closet with the rest of your gift. <laughs> what are you doing in there? I'm using the hanky for a blindfold, the tie for a noose, and Gridley, you may fire the brass frog when ready. <laughs> As our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives Kay Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, I finally realized that there was nothing I could do but be completely honest and admit, in spite of what the consequences might be, that the entire affair was the fault of Walter Denton. Although the embarrassment was pretty evenly distributed, Mr. Boynton felt that the least he could do was see Miss Enright home. And Walter, of course, dropped Mr. Conklin, like a hot potato. <laughs> when they had all gone, Mrs. Davis came in with six cups of coffee. Where did everybody go, Connie? Out, Mrs. Davis. Thanks just the same for the coffee, but I'm going to bed oh, now. Uh, just a minute, Connie. I have a little favor to ask of you. You know, everyone gave Mr. Boynton a welcome home gift today except me. Unfortunately, I'm a little short of funds, so I can't buy him anything. But if you don't mind, I'd like to iron that muffler you gave me last Christmas and give it to him in the morning. Please, Mrs. Davis, I've just You had know it. the one I mean, Connie. The one with the yellow tree on a cliff by the ocean <laughs> with a purple owl. Oh, you're a little late, so good night, Mrs. Davis. Next week, turn into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Mustard Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Plum Olive Shaving Cream comes both ways, and whichever way you prefer to shave you'll find that using either Palm Olive Brushless or Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new Palm Olive way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palm Olive Brushless or Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream today. October 24th is the anniversary of the United Nations Charter and will be observed by almost the entire civilized world. International cooperation is dependent upon you, individual citizens everywhere. The UN must have your support, faith, and enthusiasm. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations and be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.